Hello, uh, I'm Mark from Lake Superior College at the CAA here at the Center for Advanced Aviation. I've been making a few videos about sheet metal. Today I want to talk about some of the hardware, not all by any stretch of the imagination, but some of the more common hardware that you'll see involved with sheet metal, um, and not strictly sheet metal, some composites and other materials as well. The first one I want to talk about is uh, a Hylock. Hylock's a brand name of a, of a basically a kind of bolt and nut system. You can see this is the nut. It's got threads inside there. I don't know if you can see those very well. It's got uh, a hex, a 7 16 hex right here, which if you look very carefully on the, on the side, um, is meant to break away. So what this high lock is good for is fastening, uh, fastening something a little bit stronger in a rivet, obviously. This is a quarter inch shank on this. Um, but fastening two or more sheets together where you only have access to one of the sides. You can see here in the bolt, it might not show up very good, but they, there's, a, uh, there's an Allen wrench, uh, there's an Allen wrench uh, inside there and nothing, you can see nothing on the other side. So there's no hex, there's no screwdriver. It's purely uh, meant to get at from one side and one side only. So what I'm gonna do is I, I'm going to put the bolt through here. Normally you'd be attaching two or more pieces together, but just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to show how this goes. So now once I get the bolt put in there, you at least need access for that much, at least to get um, the bolt in there. But now you don't need to get a wrench or anything like that in there. So this threads on. And now there's several different ways to do this. One of the more common ways they make, they make an attachment that goes on a screw gun where it's got an Allen wrench uh, in the middle and then grabs the 7 16 and torques it. Uh, the other thing we can do is I have a special uh, high lock socket here. So I put the 7 16 on there and then put this Allen key. You can see this, it's got a hole that goes all the way through there. So now this, now this Allen wrench can go in there till I, till I get that I'm just holding the Allen wrench and I'm torquing it. And kind of the beautiful thing about these is each one is different, but it will, when I get there, it will break off at the desired torque. So here's where it broke off right there. And then my Allen wrench. Now this one, I would have normally wanted to use a little bit different grip length. Normally you'd want probably about two or three threads showing out the uh, top side of this of the nut part. So this isn't the right size high lock for what I got going on here, but I just wanted to show uh, how that works and how this breaks off. To remove this, it would be as simple as you can cut this off. Most people just take a vice grip, hold on to the nut portion, and then use the, uh, use the Allen key there to take it off. So that's really all there is to a high lock, but you can see I was able to do everything from this side. So if there wasn't room to get a hand back here to, to hold it with a wrench or a screwdriver, uh, you can use a high lock. The next thing I want to show you is a real basic um, staple in mostly in general aviation is just a Tennerman clip. Um, so what I have here, I've already pre-drilled this, but I have two, uh, two holes in this piece of sheet metal here. These Tennerman clips use a PK or a sheet metal screw. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just put the screw through there and then this clip kinda acts like a nut. So now I can kinda get that on there. And now, eventually that Tinnerman nut will grab now I got that, so now it's, now it's holding on to two pieces of sheet metal. This is used, uh, this is used in, in applications where it's not structural at all. If you're just holding a, uh, a lot of times you'll see them um, holding uh, baffling in an engine. It's probably a real common place where you might see that. The next thing is a Tinnerman clip or a nut plate clip. Um, so here's a Tinnerman clip right there, same kind of process where it uses a coarse threaded screw and a nut plate. 
So what I'm gonna do is uh, I wanna measure where I wanna put this. So I put my nut plate clip on here, make a measurement where the uh, where the screw goes. Okay, so I got a measurement there. And now I'm gonna drill. Same thing here. So now I drilled holes big enough uh, for my, my screw to go through. And I got a big hole here, so now I can put this clip on here. So there's my nut plate clip. Same process with the Tinnerman clip. I wanna take my piece here, put my clip on there, measure where the hole is, I got it marked. Just drill a hole there. I already had these pre-marked so I kinda made both of our lives a little easier. So now I can put my Tinnerman clip in there. Like so. And then... Take my... Uh, take my coarse threaded screw, that goes in to the Tinnerman clip. And I'm sure I have a So now those Tinnerman clips, now I don't need to hold those. It's basically a uh, a, a, a self-contained nut where I don't have to I don't have to get a wrench on there. So now So there, I got a Tinnerman clip and an, and a nut plate. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't torque this one all the way down. But now I would be able to uh, attach. This would be used primarily, especially these nut plates, these clip-on nut plates. Real, real popular to use around cowlings, um, inspection plates, things like that. The last but not least. Uh, probably one of the most common uh, hardware attachments for uh, cowlings, inspection plates, things like that. Would be a permanent, a permanent nut plate. So a permanent nut plate looks like this. It's got, it's got a threaded. It's, it's got a threaded end, basically the nut end for the, for the screw, and then two, uh, two spots where it rivets, where it rivets down. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to attach one of these nut plates. The first is the cheapest and, and easiest method because it doesn't really require any tools. I'm gonna drill a hole Drill a hole where I want the screw to be. Here's my, here's my screw and I'm gonna use this as the nut. So I'm just gonna put that screw on there. Now I know, now I know where that nut plate wants to be. I just kinda look at that screw and center it. And then, change bits here, because these nut plates are made for a number three rivet, so I'm gonna put a number 40 bit on here. Got my spot marked. And what I'm gonna do here is use the, uh, use the nut plate 
as a drill guide here to make a mark. So now I got a mark. I got a mark on there. Okay. Now we'd want to come through and deburr that hole. But now I can use a Cleco. And now I've held half of that on. So I got the screw where I want it. I got the Cleco holding half of the nut plate on. Make sure my fingers are not in the way. And there's my other Cleco. So now, uh, now I'm ready to rivet uh, that nut plate that nut plate on. The other way, and uh, if you do a lot of sheet metal fabricating where you're doing a lot of um, nut plates, you want to use a jig like this. So I have a specialized jig here. It's a specialized tool made for all different sizes of nut plates because nut plates come in all different sizes. Um, this one, the way this works is it's basically got one side where it's just got a pilot. Uh, it happens to be a 764 pilot, uh, and then on the other side, it's got the two pilots. So I'll show you kind of how that works. So it's got a 964 pilot. What I'm going to do is I've already marked where I want my hole. So there's my 964 hole. Go back to my 40 bit because that's what the rivets will end up being. So now I use the end that just has the one pilot and I put it right in the hole. So now I know exactly where I want it. Find the spot where I can uh, get a nice little so now these are sized for a number 40 bit, like I have here. So now I use that as my drill guide. So there's one side. Now I flip it over and both of the pilots will fit through there. Probably should have deburred it. You know, you can come back when it's all said and done and, and deburr it. find a good way to balance it here. Kind of a much faster way to uh, to drill my drill my hole there. So now um, if we look at it here if I hold this if I did it right, the hole should line up right there. So, because the way this is designed, it's designed to hold a cowling or something like that, it needs to lay flat. We're gonna have to use flush rivets. Um, so one thing you can do, and this is why I always caution people uh, when you're deburring holes, is use this deburring tool, which kind of the nice thing about this deburring tool, it has a 100 degree it's got a 100 degree cutting edge on it, so it can be used as a countersink. Uh, this is pretty thick, this is 40, this is 40 thousandths aluminum here. So it's thick enough for these number three rivets to do a countersink. So what I'm gonna do, and I've done this enough times where I can kinda reasonably guess what's a correct countersink. Take a rivet. And I got it close enough. Close enough by first guess. Then I'm going to do the other side. So 
So now that I have those countersunk, sunk, I can put my um, put that on there. Put a Clico on there to help me hold it. And now I don't know if you can see on the bottom there, but uh, the rivet comes through the nut plate and we're looking for about 1.5D, uh, 1.5 the diameter, and that is probably almost exactly 1.5D. So, I had my squeezer here. What I'm gonna do, it's really important that you get the, uh, the rivet centered. I don't know if you can see that from where the... We get the rivet centered on there, and then... Squeeze that one on. And I'll take this other Clico off. Put my other rivet on there, and again, just double check it and look at it, but it's about 1.5D, so. If it worked the first time, we're pretty sure it's going to work the second time. I'm going to hold it this way so I can't drop it like I did the last time. And there, from that side, you can see that nut plate is riveted right to that piece so that nut plate won't move and if I did it right that screw will fit through there